Hey guys, welcome back. I'm me, DC Connor, and this is my state of the collection with the L4 2020. And uh, I always loved the opportunity I have to share my collection. And I think it's one of the best parts of YouTube ability to share with like minded fellow watch enthusiasts. So, welcome to my watch collection with the L4 2020. <music> Okay guys, I'm gonna start off with my first automatic watch that got me into watches. It was my belong to my father and I always considered this to be a grown up grown up watch and I never wore it during my teens and later on I decided to fix it up and it sparked the love and I started doing more research about watches. So yeah, I'm gonna always keep this one in my collection, even though I don't wear it that much. Um, because I don't know, I used to wear it daily, but now I do not. So, next watch I'm gonna show you is the Casio Data Bank. This is a vintage data bank, not the old one. And it says it has a battery and a battery indicator here. Uh, I need to replace the battery, but it's a very cool watch it's a smart watch from the 80s and my first watch uh, first ever watch was digital casio and uh, i think this is a nice symbol of it and it's worth more than the contemporary one so yeah I, i'm having casio data bank i have this for maybe two or three years in my collection you can check out my previous collection so it's surprisingly comfortable on the wrist actually Next watch I want to show you here is the pocket watch. I think pocket watches are very underrated and uh, I I got this vintage pocket uh, Omega and I love it. I love winding it. I love the noise it creates and uh, I actually will wear it in my vest or in my jeans pocket. So I think also everyone should have a pocket watch in its collection. Okay, what next? What next should I show you? Okay, I have this beautiful, beautiful uh, vintage Longines Calatrava. I call it Calatrava because Calatrava is my grail watch, one of my grail watches. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, I do not have it yet. Uh, maybe one day I will, but until then, I enjoy wearing my vintage Longines and it has a manual mount caliber. I forgot the reference number, but it's very nice. It's very thin and uh, works well on the wrist. Love the dial. It's a sunburst dial. Everything about this watch is so elegant and simple and it's a manual wound movement. I love this watch. I love this piece. It's fantastic. I bought it from a watchmaker actually. The next piece in my collection is 34 millimeter Omega automatic chronometer constellation. Very beautiful watch. I don't know what to say guys. I had many many vintage Omegas and I do see the value in these pieces a lot. Check out the lugs. Check out the lugs on this one and uh, very cool it's not gold it's steel actually it's gold capped the bezel and the lugs are gold capped and the profile here there's so many details it's a simple dress watch but there's so many details on this one it's really amazing uh, it's a steel profile and of course back here you have a constellation absolutely love this piece i enjoy it i cannot tell you which one I like the best Longine or Omega, absolutely fantastic. And it even has a little bit scratched up crystal, a plastic crystal, but I'm not even gonna bother to polish it up because I kind of like the character. Next piece in my collection, which I actually got uh, last day of the 2019, 31st December 2019, I got this little beautiful dress watch from Piaget. It's uh, from the Piaget governor uh, from the 90s, early 90s. P 
Piaget Governor Series and that Governor Series had some really awesome watches and this one is the least awesome because it's just a calendar watch. Uh, many listings are claiming it's a perpetual calendar. I haven't really checked because I don't wear it every day but I was surprised how many how much wrist time it got over the last year because this watch uh, ever since I got it I wore it uh, for maybe four or five months on a daily basis all until the summer uh, because it's 33 millimeters and this watch made, made me break my bottom line of watches which was 34 thanks to this Omega which is gorgeous and this is 33 and a half actually but I'm not gonna pinch it it has a moon phase uh, has a calendar and uh, it's very interesting piece uh, 18 carats out gold very nice and I found this yellow band that I was looking for something like this to color that works well with the moon uh, on the dial and uh, and also it makes it look larger on the wrist even though it's my wrist got bigger this year because I got bigger and because I got fatter corona and everything but nevertheless I got it service uh, I got it service independently with my watchmaker and now it's in great condition and uh, I love it I love it also has a, a gold buckle Piaget gold buckle as well so I think this, these are my dressy pieces which I love but I do not love um, there's no other dressy piece that I love more than this one this is my Reverso, JLC Reverso Grand Date, 8 days power reserve, and uh, I absolutely uh, am always mesmerized by this piece. This one uh, deserves all the attention it gets. I was wearing last year a lot of other watches, so I didn't give it so much wrist time but it's my favorite piece in my collection probably my favorite i think it is it's my favorite piece in my collection and uh, i really enjoy wearing it and it's a reverso um has a beautiful moment let me just show you it's a mute the moment is beautiful it has a double barrel and uh yeah if you aren't a fan of getting a reverso uh get one because reversos are my favorite GLC watches my next dress watch and the last one this is a semi dress semi casual everyday watch uh, as the day just uh, this is winter day just it's actually my birth year they just and uh, but it wasn't intentionally my birth year they just when I ran the serial numbers I learned that it was my birth year. Uh, this is my first Rolex and uh, the Rolex I uh, wore so much that I can test you. Vintage they just it is a Plexi um, 16030. This is a reference 16030 and uh, it's just beautiful. I love Romans on a watch. That's always a plus for me but these are applied Romans and uh, my first Rolex, it has an engine turn bezel. And uh, yeah, I love this piece. I cannot, I can see myself wearing this piece for the rest of my life and not needing any other watches. And they just is a piece like that, even though, especially modern they just, but this vintage is very charming, it has a stretched up Jubilee, but I don't care, I just love it. It was my first Rolex and uh, I still love it still love it like the first day I actually got rid of uh, my Brightwing uh, to get to get this day just and uh, I I got back my Brightwing so 
th this Brad Twing was one of my first luxury watches and uh, in order to get the day just uh, I had to get rid of this one so but this is a rebuy which I bought actually recently this is a Brad Twing crosswind has an amazing dial Brad Twing crosswind has a dial that is very very well done and uh, I had one just like this my electric was a black dial with the air coating and a beer bowl and uh, I I got the opportunity to buy this one back and I just wanted to relive that excitement when I first got it but I can tell you the first time uh, it's not like the first time I can tell you just that nevertheless this is a piece in a better condition than the first one has a bracelet actually I do I do have a weather band for this one so I enjoy switching up but the bracelet is perfect on Brightling Crosswind and I did a review of most of these watches and uh, if so, so, so you can just check out my previous videos but right now I have them both and I'm very happy next piece in my collection it's very uh, dear and sentimental to me because this is a gift and uh, I got this as a gift from my friend uh, my best man and uh, it's absolutely it has so much sentimental value that uh, I can make an entire video about that but it's a Seiko Panda chronograph uh, Seiko automatic chronograph and also the all vintage uh, Seiko chronographs uh, maybe with the poke this panda looks uh, the best and uh, I enjoy it very much it's an automatic chronograph column wheel chronograph beautiful dial a panda configuration it's very it's very uh, dear watch to me that I will keep forever and I'm gonna cherish it this is my orange monster uh, this is my summer fun Seiko beater watch that I absolutely love because it's orange and it looks so much better than the black monster and uh, it's quirky and it's fun and again it's orange my wife thinks it's ugly it's the ugliest thing ever but uh, I cannot argue with her but I still love it it's so ugly that there's a cult following of these watches and this is the first generation on a super engineer bracelet from Strapsco but it's absolutely fun watch and quirky as hell so next uh, on my piece here is IWC IWC aqua timer uh, I used to have a Pelagos and uh, I had to get rid of the Pelagos in order to fund my grail purchase of this Reverso Grand Date. And uh, it, I really hated to let go of Pelagos, and uh, it was always back on my to buy list. And uh, this one kind of reminded me of Pelagos, and this is why I decided to get it, even though this is IWC. It's yeah, obviously, I think it's a better done watch than Pelagos. It's stainless steel, aqua timer, and I did a full review of this watch. I'm not gonna bother you with this, but I think it's very nice. And uh, check out the bracelet on this one. Awesome. So, also one fun summary beater and also in my last collection i had an iwc pilot's watch 3706 which i got rid which i sold uh i sold that one so i could i could get this one uh and this is a my omega moon watch also did a couple of videos on this one uh recently i got this straps co uh band for it and I wore this entire summer um, this is my corona buy and uh, I wore this entire summer and kind of got bored uh, with the moon watch but now when I got this new stripes co band uh, I love it again so yeah this is my moon watch 
Okay, let's see where we can put this here. I'm running out of space, guys. One final piece in my collection. I also not final. I have two more, but the final piece in my collection is uh, my Submariner 16610. Uh, one of my long time grail watches, and uh, recently I got the opportunity, uh, buying opportunity maybe to uh, get the newest one, 41 millimeter Rolex Submariner. And uh, it was very tempting, but uh, if I would to get it, I, that mean I would have to trade in this one and sell some more watches. And uh, I was thinking long and hard and I decided no, because I have so many memories with this one, even though the Submariner 16610 uh, has a very bad bracelet crappy bracelet and the newer one are just perfect however i bonded with this piece and uh, i think this is a uh, almost vintage and it's from the early 90s and in 20 years time i think it will be a vintage uh, piece and i hope it will get uh, some faded bezel or stuff like that but yeah absolutely love it classic piece uh, maybe nothing special to someone but uh, it's very special to me because I just love it and recently I, I paired it because it's uh, winter time here. I paired it with uh, this uh, leather band from Strapsco also and I just love the look. It's a Dasari uh, Strapsco leather band and I just love the look. Uh, the look is something that is classic and so many times copied that it's not even funny anymore but yeah my 16610 beat up old Submariner and of course speaking of beating I have two G-Shocks uh, this is uh, the one I haven't really uh, reviewed yet but this is a Neo Tokyo uh, Casio G-Shock it's like a special edition Neo Tokyo I just like the a yellow dash of yellow and red on this G-Shock and that's why I got it and I also think everyone should have a G-Shock in their collection just to preserve their nicer watches and G-Shocks are very cool and this one is also cool G-Shock I like this one this is a dark green it's not black actually and I like the red illumination on this one this is like a MS military style I did a video on this one so you can check it out on my channel and uh, yeah, that's it, guys. Thank you for watching. This was my humble collection. Uh, do tell me in the comment section, what do you think? Uh, what should my next piece be? And uh, do tell me what's in your collections in the comments down below.